Actually, I, I I went to a movie theater once through through COVID. Yeah, uh, I saw Tenant. I saw Tenant. Dude, I yeah. love. It. I thought it was. Yeah, cool. it's cool. I want to see it again. BD here with the highlight reel from our most recent episode of Talking Shop, an Instagram series on comicbook.com where we go live from at comicbook with your favorite celebs. And this week I got to chop it up with Ty Sheridan. Who is Ty Sheridan, you ask? Are you kidding me? I respond. This man is the legend from Ready Player One, one of my favorite movies of all time, not only because Easter eggs make for great YouTube videos and that movie had more eggs than a hen house, but because it was just flat out very good. And he is also the young version of Scott Summers in the more recent editions of X-Men movies. If you want to watch the entire uncut Talking Shop interview, head over to our Instagram at comic book and hit the IGTV tab. If you do so soon after this video is published, it'll be right there towards the top. You won't have to scroll down too much. This week, the reason for our interview was to promote his Quibi series Wireless and how it is using this really innovative style to enhance your viewing experience. I've experienced it. It's very cool and unique. But you know I had to ask him about Ready Player Two and his experience with Marvel movies along with the future of the X-Men. First of all, Ready Player One was pretty dang successful at the box office. The movie made almost $600 million worldwide without being part of a sprawling cinematic universe or a sequel to anything. It is based on a book and the second book is getting ready to be published, so Mr. Sheridan himself sounds pretty optimistic about a sequel. Recently, like I've had people asking me questions about, you know, uh, Ready Player Two. You know, is there gonna be a sequel? And uh, I think everybody is well aware that Ernie Klein is releasing uh, Ready Player Two, the, the novel. Um, you know, but people keep asking me, and I, I would love to have an answer for you. And I think people, you know, will will and can speculate all they want. Um, but I, I I don't really know what the plan is yet. I, I you know I have my fingers crossed, and uh, of course I think it's a great group, and I loved working on that film. So so. Uh, so yeah, I hope I hope we get to do another. I don't know if anybody wants Ready Player Two as much as I do, but I do appreciate that Ty is very excited about it as well. One thing which seems a little less likely is a continuation of the X-Men movies. Ty Sheridan played Cyclops in X-Men Apocalypse and in X-Men Dark Phoenix, plus he had a quick cameo in Deadpool 2, but with Disney buying Fox, it seems like Kevin Feige's regime at Marvel Studios might have something else in mind for the characters, might just hit reset and start from scratch whether it's X-Men or just more Marvel or DC or something like, is that the type of thing you would want to do again? Or have you even thought about that? I mean, I think it, you know, I think it depends a lot on the circumstances and, and you know, the situation, who's involved. And, um, but of course, you know, I think that the X-Men stands for something that's really meaningful, uh, you know, and, and, and it's about a, you know, it's largely about a group of people who haven't been accepted by society. And I think that that still has a lot of resonance in our culture today, in society today. And, and uh, you know, of course, you know, that was for me, like, I think that's why we all love the X-Men, you know, um, they're cool movies and, you know, they, they have cool characters with superpowers, but, but also there's, there's a, you know, there's, there are a lot of deeper themes and messages in, in, in that franchise that I really appreciate and, and respect. Um, so as long as, you know, we were staying in, in that realm, you know, uh, of course, you know, I would be, I would be open to yeah. working and, 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 you know, reprising my, my role further. Yeah, I could, I, I would, lo I would love to look into a, a snow, uh, what is the, uh, little magic ball and see the future, but you know, none of us really know what's going to happen. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm sure, you know, inevitably, whether you play this character again, like Cyclops again for some time or 30 years from now, someone else does after you have a run or don't, would it be weird to like see someone else in that role after you've done it a couple times now? A few, I mean, you've been in what, three? Uh, uh two. Well, dead, we can't, we're counting dead. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So I, I don't mean, yeah. So, so I guess two and a, two and a cameo. Two in a cameo. <laughs> <laughs> but like, would that be a weird experience? Like, I mean, to, of any role you've played, I mean, whether it's like a sequel or a reboot or anything, like, do you get like a sense of ownership over that where it would be weird to see someone else do it? Or would, you, would that kind of excite you? To uh, see someone else I don't think so. I mean, I don't think anyone really, uh, I mean, no one really owns those characters, right? You know, I think that, you know, I was excited and honored to, to play uh, Scott Summers after James Marsden, you know, yeah. I always looked up to that guy and I always thought he was, you know, super cool in those movies and, and a good guy and uh, a great actor. 
And uh, I think, you know, a lot of people would probably have, you know, that are part of the X-Men franchise now probably feel the same way towards um, all, all the, the actors that, that played the roles before them. You know, it's just, I think it's an honor to, to kind of fill the shoes of something that's great and uh, or someone that's great. And no, I don't think I would feel weird, you know, as long as it, you know, um, I think they're, they're doing, you know, the the cast is doing the story justice, and they're they're doing uh, the X Men, you know, world justice. So right, I right. I have a problem with it. For now, fans of Ty can look forward to his Quibi series Wireless. I do recommend that I watch it. I'm not just saying this; it's actually really pretty good, and it's a very unique experience. Ty's character, kind of a dick. He's not, and I'm quoting him here, 100% a dick. But you end up rooting for him when he gets stuck in the snow on the side of a mountain. What's really interesting though is that the series lets you choose how to watch based on how you're holding your phone. I won't waste your time, I'll let Ty explain. All right, I'm gonna start. This is the first episode. Um, so you'll see something, it'll say, it'll say look both ways and then it'll say watch in full screen. So if you're, if you're on, on, on Quibi, just make sure you zoom into full screen. Yeah. And it, it's, yeah. Okay, so here it is, landscape, right? So we're just, we hear Andy's And then it GPS. switches to the phone. And now you're seeing the perspective of his iPhone. So anytime you go to the vertical feed, you're gonna be in the perspective of Andy Braddock's iPhone. Here he is scrolling through his Instagram. We see him clicking on se several photos. We see friends. We see a girl. Uh-oh. I smell some drama with the girl. <laughs> <laughs> if I turn it back this way now, I can see the character just driving, scrolling on his phone, scrolling through his text. That's I see I, this I, conversation. It's so cool. Because it, it, it this is like it, it really helps the story in like such a key way. So you can see it's it's two completely different perspectives. Yeah. You know? um, and so, you know, it's now here we're going to see a FaceTime call. And so, this is like uh, the only way we see other characters for like the for the like you're you're in there. Uh, the phone is your only friend. Exactly. Yeah. So the cool thing, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll stop it right there. But the cool thing about it is, you know, you as the audience, you kind of get to choose how, how you how you're going to watch the show. To watch the entire episode of Talking Shop with Ty Sheridan, it's about 25 minutes long and we had a really good time. Head over to at comic book on Instagram and hit the IGTV tab. If you want to talk more, hit me up at Brandon Davis BD or leave a comment below. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our comicbook.com YouTube channel because we have new content twice daily and we'd appreciate it if you have a good time watching it. Head over to comicbook.com for more updates. I'm BD. I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.